pleasant greetings to all. Let us be reminded again of Jesus' words in the Gospel. One's life does not consist of possessions. This is a very consistent teaching we've been hearing since last week. All of life is nothing but relationships. But let us have a modern-day situationer to place ourselves in context. Is this lesson still relevant today? Let us have a look at the paradoxes of our time. This is the paradox of our time. We have taller buildings, but shorter tempers. Wider freeways, but narrower viewpoints. We spend more, but have less. We buy more, but enjoy it less. We have bigger houses, but smaller families. More conveniences, but less time. We have earned more degrees, but lost our common sense. We have gained more knowledge, but less discernment. There are more experts, but more problems. This is the time when we choose any religion that fits our personality, but deny the God who gave us one. We have multiplied our possessions, but reduced our values. We talk too much, love too seldom, and hate too often. We've learned how to make a living, but not a life. We've conquered outer space, but not inner space. This is the paradox of our time. We've learned to rush, but not to wait. And under the magnificence of a starry night, we applaud the design, and ignore the designer. We have fancier houses, but broken homes, steeper pockets, and shallow relationships. We found riches, but lost souls. This is indeed the time we place more value on success than on significance. This is the paradox of our time. Just this week, a particular university's medical department scheduled a baccalaureate mass for 18 graduates. Only five students showed up for the mass. Can you imagine that? One parent said how disappointing the situation is right now that most students do not see the value and importance of thanking God for His graces. Our situationer is correct in saying that we have earned degrees but lost our common sense. We gained more knowledge but less discernment. In Jesus' parable, we have God asking the foolish person, You fool! This night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? So, I think it is timely to go back to an oft-repeated lesson on time management for our eternal life. Let me start by sharing with you again this little story about time management. One day, an expert in time management was speaking to a group of business students. In front of him was a one-gallon wide mouth jar. He said, okay, time for a quiz. He produced about a dozen fist-sized rocks and carefully placed them one at a time into the jar. When the jar was filled to the top and no more rocks would fit inside, he asked, Is this jar full? Everyone in the class said, Yes. Then he said, Really? Then he placed gravel in and shook the jar, causing pieces of gravel to work themselves down into the space between the big rocks. Then he asked the group once more, Is the jar full? By this time, the class was on to him. Probably not, one of them answered. Good, he replied. He reached under the table and brought out a bucket of pebbles. He started dumping the pebbles into the jar, and it went into all of the spaces left between the rocks and the gravel. Once more, he asked the question, is this jar full? No, the class shouted. Once again, he said, good. Then he grabbed a pitcher of water and began to pour it in until the jar was filled to the brim. Then he looked at the class and asked, 
What is the point of this illustration? One student raised his hand and said, The point is, no matter how full your schedule is, if you try really hard, you can always fit some more things in it. Hmm, do you agree? No, the speaker replied. That is not the point. The truth this illustration teaches us is this. If you don't put the big rocks in first, you will never get them in at all. Now, what does this illustration teach us? The simple lesson is this. Managing your time is not a matter of squeezing in more to your time in order to accomplish more. Rather, it is putting into your time first things first. Managing your time is making time for the most important things in your life. Why? Because if you don't put the big rocks in first, you will never get them in at all. Now, here are three steps to managing our e-time. E here, of course, stands for eternity or eternal life. Step number one, be spirit-minded. Let us observe the rule of balanced diet and exercise. As you feed your body, please feed also your soul, your spirit. As you do physical exercises, engage yourself in hobbies and recreation like playing basketball or going swimming. As you spend some time healing your body as well, please take steps to also exercise and heal your spirit. Remember, you cannot take your body with you to life everlasting, right? The letter of Paul to the Colossians remind us, think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Step number two, simplify your life. Simplicity is a journey, not an event. It is a choice, a decision. The bottom line is that only you are responsible for what you bring into your life. Live within your means. Try to follow the one in, one out rule. That is, when you buy or acquire something new, please get rid of something old. The book of Ecclesiastes reminds us, vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. And step number three, store up treasures in heaven. Earn so as to give. Remember, nothing is lost when given to someone with love. Each is stored in heaven. The Gospel of Luke presents Jesus telling us a parable where God says to the foolish person, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? So, here are the three steps to managing your e-time. Be spirit-minded, simplify your life, store up treasures in heaven. Let me end with something for you to ponder on. I was here. I crossed this ocean. I walked this path. I lived this life. But what do I leave behind? What evidence will future generations have of my existence? Empty rooms? Faded photographs? Dilapidated buildings? Dusts and bones and chiseled stone? The scraps of self, the residue of life? The ripples fade and they come to nothing. A footprint, day census. A statistic, ink drying on a death certificate, filed away and gone forever. And maybe a legacy is immaterial. 
Maybe a person's impact can't be determined by a calculator. Maybe the ripples of our time on the earth, the love we show, the faith we share, the good we do, the people we help. Maybe they go on forever. Maybe they multiply with time until a snowball becomes an avalanche, a drop becomes a flood, a spark becomes a fire, and a single voice becomes a tumult roaring to the universe that I have walked this path, I lived this life. I was here. And yes, heaven will rejoice because you were here and made a difference in other people's lives. Amen.